For those of you who've been following me for a while, you will probably realize that this is the plantation where I planted, I think I planted initially five walnuts that I'd grown from walnut seeds from a tree that my grandfather planted. And when I was weeding in the garden, I would bring stuff up here and plant, uh, particularly the um, oxide daisies, because I love them. But you can see here's a gilded rose, this is a spindle, this is a rowan, oxide daisies, this is a scrub plum that's making itself known. This is a gilded rose, its berries are coming out now. Another plum, sadly this spindle died. Um, gilded rose, now this is a walnut tree. I'll tell you a secret. It looks like an ash tree and can be mistaken for an ash tree because if you look, the leaves are very similar. But to tell the difference between an ash tree and a walnut tree, all you have to do is pinch the leaf like that and smell it. Smell your fingers. Just pinch and smell your fingers and it smells delicious. So walnut trees have this wonderful aroma. They also, their baby leaves are just so gorgeous. I'm so thrilled that this walnut trees, tree is at this stage uh, because so many of them died. Here you can see there's um, um, scabious that I planted, took it out of the garden. Here's a rowan, there's a thistle. Here's a evening primrose that I planted out here. Here's a, oh, I've got to figure out where I'm going to walk next. But um, not mallow. Um, no, definitely not mallow. Uh, I'll come back to remembering what that is. That's something I planted out here. I'm just being stupid with plant names at the moment. Here's a rowan that the sheep got to. It's coming up still. There's more scabious, oxide daisies, a spindle, more gilda rose. Look. Oh, hello. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. I was going to point out this. I think this is one of the brome grasses. Then um, this is a nice sized row in here. It's coming on along nicely. There's a lot of these plum trees. Uh, which I'm just going to let grow on. Here's another evening, evening primrose. And then here is another tiny walnut tree that I transplanted after another one died. Uh, another uh, rowan. Look at all the... I'm just not going to walk any further. There's... If you go... I'll zoom in. And you'll see right there is some yarrow... Lots of, the oxide daisies have taken off here, which is fantastic. I planted loads and I threw a lot of seed out, collected seed last year. The evening primrose is doing well. So I'm just trying to get it into a flora of abundance. So it's doing pretty well. I mean, the evening primrose hopefully will continue self-sowing and perpetuating itself. There might not be any next year, if I sow fine baby evening primrose this year and sow them, there will be some next year. Otherwise, these will seed head out and hopefully spread. But it's, um, oh, here's yarrow right under my feet, as it were. So that's yarrow, oxide daisy, thistle. And I think, um, oh, and there's some um, catmint. So just planting as many hardy, vivacious plants as possible in here, um, partially to shelter the walnut trees. And see, th that was a recent yarrow planted in, a recent scabies planted in. This oxide daisy didn't do very well. I think while we were planting, we broke it. Oops, that'll have to go over. I'm taking a lot of the thistles out because I'm trying to get variety. 
So as you saw, there are thistles in here, but I don't want them to take over because I want the biodiversity of pollen to spread over the summer months. In the spring, you have the Gilda Rose, you have the spindle in the spring, you have the rowan in the spring. Then in the summer, you have the evening primrose, the oxide daisy, um, the yarrow, the scabias. And scabias go all summer long. The oxide daisies will stop being pollinators soon. They only have a limited season. So yeah, trying to get as broad a diversity of, yeah, foxgloves. I'm gonna let these seed on and hopefully there will be lots of foxgloves here. So foxgloves and evening primroses, that one there, they're biannuals. So they flower one year, sow their seeds, grow a, a, a floret, and then the following year they produce uh, flowers. So it's every two years they flower. I'm so pleased. I cannot tell you how pleased I am that this walnut is doing so well. It is just absolutely, I'm thrilled to bits, I am. Anyway, this is, um, yeah, and this spindle is doing really well. See, I mean, even here, this thrives, and then that spindle right there dies. So you just don't know. And I think we have three walnuts going, which is great, because I thought we'd lost all five, um, and I sewed in some more. Uh, that I had grown myself. I have one left that I've grown from seed because I'm waiting. The walnut tree doesn't necessarily walnut seed every year. So I've got to, um, anytime it does, I'm out there gathering up walnuts to sow, but I only had one year where I found 10 walnuts and I immediately, I didn't eat a single one. I sewed them all. This, by the way, is a grain elevator, a uh, grain elevator, a hay elevator for when I'm loading small bales into the, into the big tall barn. Okay, so there we go. Anyway, look, this scabies is flowering. Beautiful baby.